Welcome back to Pathfinder Kingmaker. I might have to uh, do a one per day episode release on Pathfinder Kingmaker for a period of time due to uh, being slightly overworked in terms of how many episodes I have to record every day. But uh, it will be temporary in that case because this game, uh, we're barely uh, into Act 3. So, and yeah, it's quite massive. Now, in the last episode, we finished the uh, Curse of C uh, Candlemere. So, we should go into uh, the um, throne room, I believe, and talk to the um, person who demanded us go pick up his treasures. And also, other people. Hello, your grace. Hmm. Feels strange. It's amazing I can just go and have a chat with an actual baron. I wanted to talk about Ekon. I'm worried about him lately. Although worried might not be... Or worried might be too strong a word. He's way too gloomy. Even more so than usual, if that's possible. Life without a family must be hard for him. But he is not completely alone. He has us. I know we can't replace what he lost, but we must remind him that we are here and he can talk to us. What are you getting at? What I'm getting at is that we should hold a merry revelry and use the opportunity to talk to him heart to heart. If we just invite him for a drink, he'll no doubt refuse. So we must organize everything in secret. We'll gather guests, prepare food and drink, and bring Ekon, and have so much fun. I'll even bring my loot. What do you say? Lawful good. Helping Ekon is our comrad comradely duty, and if we need to throw a feast to do that, then that's what we're going to do. I'm not sure I'd put it like that, but I'm glad you agreed. I've talked to Alina, the innkeeper, and she's happy to help us. Although, between us, I'm not sure what made her so enthusiastic. Anyway, you should talk to her, and I should go and think what I'm going to play. And one more thing, don't be late. I fear if we don't pull Akin out of his mood now, it'll be too late. Okay, companion quest. Now, the person we want to talk to is Willis Gunderson. Is he in here? Apparently it's... Oh! I don't have to go into the bedroom. We have a chest here. Oh well. Oh, well, there certainly isn't any Gunderson in here. Let's check quickly with the storyteller if we have anything out of interest. Seventeen pieces. Yikes. 600 gold coins from there. Okay. So we need more stuff. Why are you walking so slowly? Come on, game. Where is this fellow we need to talk to? Um... I need to find where he is. Okay, so apparently he's in the tavern, which serves us nicely since we need to go there anyways for Ekon's quest as well. That's one tip I can give. Uh, do not delay doing the companion quests for too long. Okay, so... He's over here. 
Willis raises his head and gives you a nervous smile. My Baron, I was waiting for you. Any news? I visited the cursed island. It swarms with monsters. The ranger and the paladin are dead. And the cleric, the cleric of Nethys left in voluntary exile. The ruins are completely empty. No treasures. For several moments, Willis is silent, trying to wrap his head around what you said. He finally shudders and hugs himself as though he suddenly grew cold. That means... He gulps. That means the curse really exists. His eyes meet yours. Right? <laughs> That's rather nasty, I think. It's too tempting. Love 28. You know, it just occurred to me. You sent those poor sods to the island, right? So, it was you who doomed them and sent them to certain death, and then you sent me there as well. So now I'll have to spend my own resources paying for your purification ritual, and you're just going to leave like nothing happened? Failed? Oh well. Willis looks sh shocked at first, but he soon regains his composure. It's so boring when we roll a 1. I suppose, Your Grace, that the cause of all the troubles must have been something else. Maybe weather conditions were unfavorable, or actually, I think you have nothing to worry about. He casts an unkind glance towards you and digs out a pouch of money. Here is your reward, as promised. 1500 coins and 900 experience. Willis looks around, slapping his pockets. Seems I've had no luck with this island, no profits at all. I guess I should move further to the east. People say the Tours of Lebanese have plenty of places where an inquisitive mind might find something of value. And right now, if you don't mind, I could use a drink. I'm guessing we need to talk to Elena. As you approach, the red-headed innkeeper curtsies awkwardly, your grace. You must have come to talk about the feast for Ekundayo. I'd be happy to. I'll provide food, drinks, and everything will be first class. Who will serve at the feast? With your permission, Your Grace, for such an honor, with such esteemed guests, I'd like to do it yourself, my, my, do it myself, Your Grace. Elena smiles awkwardly, turning an even brighter red. And how much will this idea cost me? Don't mention it, Your Grace. It's such an honor for me. Everything is on the house. I commend your enthusiasm. Why would you? Oh, Your Grace, isn't it so? It'd be my pleasure. I hope everyone likes it, including Ekundayo. Then we need only to agree on the place. I guess there's no two ways about it. We'll have to have it right in this room. We can decorate it, of course. Ntavi. That's an interesting name. Forgive me, but if we are thinking about the same Ekundayo, he will likely feel uncomfortable indoors. The feast must definitely be held in the woods, if Madame Innkeeper is up for such a challenge. Elena is speechless. Speechless, either due to astonishment, indignation, or both. Who are you? The woman stands with a, tall, with a calm smile. My name's Ntavi. I'm passing through the city. Ekon and I know each other from a long from long ago, since back when he guarded caravans. We travelled together for a long time. Pursing her lips, the innkeeper studies Santavi carefully. Can you think of a suitable place? Hmm. How about the royal hunting grounds? I've seen the place in passing. It's not far from the city, it's a cozy nook, and there's water nearby. What do you say, Alina? The innkeeper sizes up the woman opposite her. I might not know a Kandayo as well as some, but I see no trouble in holding a feast in the woods, or on a mountain, or in a swamp for that matter. Wonderful! In that case, I'll gladly meet both of you in the agreed-upon place. My, I've seen a lot since as a keeper here, but when one just invites herself like that... The innkeeper clicks her tongue. Oh, what got into me, grumbling. It's high time to start cooking. Your Grace, please take care to bring Ekundayo to the agreed place. Lindsay and I will do the rest. 
Okay. We can deal with this party. I hope it isn't far away. No, it's just over here. Location is not available. That's fine, because we're going to the hunting grounds. This is a rather big location. Without a doubt. Oh, mushrooms. No, no. Pick them up. Why does that have to take so much time? something and tell them the warrior's dog tag the goblins were torn apart by humongous claws their ugly little faces show horror so what's out here that has torn things up with humongous claws The stone shows a primitive charcoal depiction of a jackal's head with three eyes. Some edible moss. Greater Ward. All four. Before we uh, have this feast, I think we'll uh, explore the area. Let's finish him. We shall overcome. Two primal hydras. Three. Um. Don't you have a? difficult as I thought they would be, but rightly. Some Hydra eyes. Interesting hunting grounds. Ferocious Wyvern. Skin and collect. And let's quickly uh, modify this. Uh... It seems rather pointless to have him in the behind.
There we go. What's that? Good question. Anything else? It's uh, the knee splitter. Which is a heavy pick plus two giant bane. Torag's pendant. How ironic that it was uh, Harim that picked it up. It's hard to tell whether these bones belong to a human or an animal, but they were definitely shattered by some mighty jaws. Claude paw print paw, paw paw prints mark the ground. Save them. You see that? Applause, please. So what are we looking at here? Primal giant fly trap. Grotus awaits us. You require my assistance? Tear the running won't help you. <laughs> Melted shard of a ring and a throwing axe plus one. My search was not in vain. Anything else? And here we have a wand of searing light and a hunter's roast. Let's uh, quickly inscribe that. Oh. Rice and nut pudding as well. Where is it? There we go. Oh, there's another box there. Another melted shard of a ring. What's that? Talden Snuffle. Okay. We march ahead. Let's pick the moss. Without a doubt. Who does it? Going to die beer. Apparently, we're outside of uh, Ekon's ability to skin. A tattered leather armor and the hilt of a cheap sword are lying among the bones. I 
I don't like guidance. surprises. Applause, please. Thank you. Any last wishes? We'll do it the hard way. Let yourself expose. Now. <laughs> I wonder if they do have the ability to become invisible. Bunch of them too. Um, we shall overcome. What a waste. Somebody used clay to make these clumsy figurines, remotely resembling owl bears. You're but a footnote. Let's go down! He covered as dust. We can level up. Finish the area before will we do they that. Ever learn? To the dust you will ah! One single albear? Doesn't sound very likely. Three greater dire bears. Um I will see this through. Patience. I'm listening. Adventures call to them. I will put it. Quiet. I'm thinking. We could throw a bomb. Let us not hesitate. You can cast haste. Well, sorry, was lost in thought. We can do animate dead. There we go. Open up the dryad. A dung pat the size of a tower shield can be seen in the high grass. Wait, there's something here. Taldon dog warrior dog tag. Ferocious Hydra. Lines. It didn't last too long. Cam Camaberry? Was not in vain. Giant fly trap. Over oh, here, some <laughs> goblins. <laughs> Absolutely nothing useful in their inventories. Take that. Attack. Another owlbear, or three. The dead elf or human, I'm not sure.
I think that's most of the area. We only have this little part left. Okay, now let's go back here. Tavi. There you are. Ekon, old friend, speak of the devil. Ekon's face freezes in surprise. He stares at Antavi and Alina silently for a few moments, completely still. Finally, Ekon turns a quizzical look to you. Silently pat Ekon on the back. Grabbing. Grabbing Ekon's arm, Elena leads him to the tables with food. Please come here, Ekon Dio, if you don't mind. Uh, you don't mind if I call you Ekon? Ntave fixes her hair and you notice a tattoo of a stinging wasp on her wrist. Following the couple with a long stare, Ntave says quietly to you, Please come to me when everyone is busy eating and drinking. I would like to talk to you. Okay, let's talk to Ekken. The ranger greets you with a curt nod. Your grace must want to talk to Ekken. I'll go make sure everyone has enough to drink. Looking at Alina's back, Ekken turns to you, fixing one of his be belt bags. Cunning plan to bring a hunter to a feast. Call him to hunt. It was a team effort. Lindsay, Alina, and Tavi. And you, according to Alina. Ekon is silent for a while. Thank you. I see Alina is trying very hard to please you. She is the lady of the house. This is her responsibility. I think this is more than a sense of obligation. Ekon shrugs nonchalantly. Does it not ruin your fun? A faint smile spreads on Ekon's face. There is very much of her, all at once. However, she is a good woman. Let's talk about something else. Uh-huh. Point at a glass. Drink with me? Ekon looks uncertainly at the offered glass. Alina's wine is quite good. It is your choice, though. Ekon is silent for a moment, then pours himself some wine and tastes it. And then his face relaxes slightly. Not bad. I hope we didn't do more harm than good. Are you at least having fun? Ekon chuckles and nods confidently. It's good to be among friends and trees, and better still, not holding a bow. A bow. I find it interesting to look at faces, listen to what they say to each other. I missed it. How are you? Life is life. It goes on whether we wish it or not. Tired of fighting? Ready to lie down and give up? Ekon's eyes flare. What do you know of how I live? Ekon stares into the distance. I wake up with the first rays of the of sun. I see the faces of my family. Fire turns to ashes. Midday turns to midnight. And when the stars are shining, I still think of them. Someday bitterness and rage fill me. I drive them away. Other days, I feel a smile on my face and I appall myself. Only hunting numbs my feelings, but the farther I follow the trail, the darker the woods are and the harder it is to find my way back. Um, don't submit to despair. Deep inside, you want to be happy again and your family would want the same for you. Don't be ashamed of the moments when joy returns to your life. Ekon smiles slightly. Easier said than done, but there is wisdom in your words. Why did you never tell me about Ntavi? Ekon shrugs. Why? How did you meet Ntavi? Guarded caravans. She talked a lot. I thought she must be in love with her own voice. Ekon winces. But over time, we walked many roads together. I learned she had a steady eye and a strong hand. 
and then the desert taught her clo to close her mouth. Sand gets in. Ekun smiles slightly, but his eyes are joyful. Why did you stop talking? The ranger rubs the back of his head, then smirks. Amanda said, a caravan is here, you'll go to the tavern again, and Tavi is a bad influence, and then and Tavi started coming less and less. Were you close? Ekun looks at the grass beneath his feet, as fire and wind. I see. Ekun nods. I'm going to get something to eat. Let's talk to Entavi then. Your Grace. Smiling Entavi nods politely. I admit we got acquainted very suddenly. Haha, <laughs> that's right. When we met for the first time, I had to speak to him. Interruptions be damned. What was I supposed to do? I haven't seen Ekon for such a long time, and I was so surprised to hear about him. So, what did you want to talk about? I wanted to ask a favor. You see, Elena the innkeeper treats me coldly, and I have no reason why. Yesterday, for instance, she argued with me before changing the sheets in my room, and today she refuses to pour me a glass of wine. So I was thinking she wouldn't refuse if the Baron himself asked for a bottle of wine. And uh, why do you need a bottle of wine? And Tavi's laughter is soft and musical. What a strange question. Really, why would I need a bottle of wine at a party? Fine, I'll see what I can do. Thank you, Caladorn. Still, why do you need a bottle of wine? Well, I just wanted to steal Ekken for a moment, to walk and talk with him, eye to eye. I've known him for a long time and he could definitely use someone to talk to. Smile in response and leave? No, I'd like to know you better. I'm at your service. A curious tattoo, a stinging wasp, does it mean anything? Your grace is very observant, and Tavi runs her finger over the image. This tattoo is a tribute to tradition. It symbolizes the transition from unconscious dogmatic conformity to mindfulness and self-awareness. Where are you from? I grew up in Nantambu, far from here, but never liked that city. I left it years ago and haven't been back since. I remember leaving it vividly. Little towers covered with bright mosaic mosaics dot the horizon, while I lay hidden in the bushes of sugarcane on a rumbling cart drawn by a lame old donkey. And Tavi laughs. How did you meet Ekon? We guarded a caravan together. At first I couldn't stand Ekon. I took his silence for arrogance. But then a sandstorm forced us to spend a week in a tiny village. We drank everything the only inn had to offer and got to know each other better. Didn't you say before that he doesn't like taverns? And Tavi grins, staring off into the distance. He behaved somewhat differently when he was young. Curious story. And old as the world. Ekin never mentioned you. You don't say. <laughs> it can't be. And Tavi looks at you with a smirk. And he's usually so talkative. Keeps talking about himself, his past, his dreams and plans. A couple of jokes here and there. Let's change the subject. Agreed. And smile in response and leave. Then let's see if we can get this bottle of wine. Alina, could you give me a bottle of wine? Don't bother with a bottle, Your Grace. I'll pour it for you. Just bring a glass. I need a bottle for Entavi. She's our guest and you can't refuse her food and drinks. The innkeeper raises an eyebrow. I have no idea why Your Grace invited this harpy. Of course, you know better, but still. Items received cheap wine. Thank you for organizing such a wonderful party for Ekon. My pleasure, Your Grace. I'm happy everything turned out this way as well. Besides, entertaining a man such as Ekondayo is a pleasure. The innkeeper giggles, covering her mouth with a handkerchief. Ekon pretends not to hear. Well, I'm going to go check in on some of the others. Being a baron, having to get people wine bottles. Pass the bottle to Entavi. Here, I hope you like this. Casting a warm glance your way, Entavi nods gratefully. Thank you very much. Now, if you don't mind.
Lena, could you please find a wine opener for me? Hmm, would you please wait? So, my friend, I'll just steal you for a moment. Hey, where are you going? Woof, but wow. Lindsay looks up at you, surprised, trying to keep the rhythm. Where are you going? If you leave now, the whole plan goes to pieces. Okay, stay at the party. Clear as day, I just wanted to have a break from the noise. comfortable with this if we leave still I have to go that didn't work so we'll just have to wait then how annoying a rest would be welcome That's an interesting sound. I guess I'll just pause the recording until they come back then. Oh, they are back. Mitavi is not though. Forwards. Hmm. Lindsay, I think now is the perfect time for one of your performances. Are you sure? Have you time to talk to everyone? I'm sure. Begin. Ahem. Your attention? My friends, let's raise our glasses. Let's celebrate our adventures and that we have others to share them with. Also, let's thank Elena for a generous feast. The evening was wonderful. Elena bows, turning red. And now, I'd like to play something special for you. I haven't composed anything for a while, but this is a special occasion. Striking a theatrical pose, Lindsay begins to play. Ekken quietly takes a place next to you. Music starts flowing. Lindsay's performance isn't perfect, but it is deep and emotional. One cadence follows another, and music echoes among the trees. Suddenly, you notice that Ekken is standing much closer than you thought. You realize he's slowly moving closer to you, fidgeting from foot to foot and trying not to look at anyone. At the same time, Elena is trying to lean closer and closer to Ekken, trying to touch his shoulder. Noticing your look, she gives you a sharp look. Take a step away from Ekken. You take a step and Ekken does the same. Elena pouts and looks away. Finally, Lindsay strikes the final chord and the sound fades. Pleased with her performance, Lindsay receives well-deserved applause. What a bizarre companion quest. Looks at you tilting head to the side, sniffs your hand. The wolf who was standing nearby before, wags his tail and approaches Ekken. Aw, just look at that Ekken, he seems so loyal. You have to give him a name. You do. You've been together for so long and you've been through so much together. Ntavi shakes her head. The heart wants what it wants. Why would one fake affection when there is none? Um... If you need to get over yourself to do this, Ekken, then don't. His loyalty is appreciated. Not ready to decide his fate, though. Ntave nods in understanding. 
By the way, friends, not to sound too mundane, but I'm quite tired and we still have to get to the city. Maybe it's time we pack up? A rest would be welcome. So we completed that. And I think it is time to end the episode. So thank you all so very much for joining me. We'll see you all next time.